Hey everybody, it's Allison Madel here, Condoms of Love. How are you? Hope you guys had a great week. Are you ever here on our side? It's a weekend, so I hope everybody's having a beautiful weekend despite what we're seeing in our nation right now. I encourage you, um, I'm not going to preach or anything. I'm not going to get on a soapbox. I'm going to say to you this much. If there was ever a time, if ever in your life that you, if you don't pray, you're not a praying person, I'm going to ask you, would you please pray? Pray for our nation. Pray for the innocent. Pray for the people. Pray for POTUS because it's in the Bible that you're supposed to pray for our leaders. Pray for leaders in the areas that are being under attacked. I mean, there's so many. Um, So I'm just going to encourage you with that. But that was not the topic of today's podcast. Today's podcast, we're going to talk about um, nutrition. And actually, we're going to try to do a two-part series. And by far, this is not all-inclusive. These are pointers. These are tips things that could help you through pregnancy. And also, I feel like a lot of this I'm talking about is meant for everybody. So yes, it's geared for our expectant mamas, but truly, it's for all of us. But I had to make a disclaimer right off the bat. I am not a medical practitioner, OBGYN. I'm not a midwife. I'm not a dietitian. Um, what I'm sharing is information we researched. It's been tried and flown and it works. So, as I've said in multiple podcasts, between the exercise, um, the oils, all these other podcasts, if you are seeing a medical practitioner, OBGYN, midwife, dietitian, um, please, please, if you add or subtract anything, always consult with them first. Information I'm providing today has been researched, so this is information that's accurate, but it's always good to give a double check with your, you know, who you work with. Especially what I'm talking about today. If you are battling any food allergies, you really need to make sure. Obviously, it's going to be okay and healthy for you. But I'm going to share today um, and next time about 10 different um, foods and, you know, things that can help you through pregnancy as well as all for, you know, for everybody. But these are, again, um, key little tips that help you out. But one thing we have to remember for pregnancy, it's, it's vital that you have a healthy diet. There was a myth, I know, when I was expecting my, our son, and I never knew. I mean, you hear these statements, and you think they're true, and you don't know until, well, in my case, the end of my pregnancy, you don't have to eat for two. Baby is going to get what he or she needs directly from you. So you don't have to double up on your intake I didn't know that. I mean, I really did not have any idea. I thought I had to double up. And I was like a, I was like a beach whale, I'll be real with you. I used to get stuck between the furniture. It was ridiculous. And I mean, I just, I couldn't clean after a certain point. But I used to get wedged between furniture because I was so big. I think I gained 60 pounds, which was, you know, ridiculous. It was affecting my blood pressure at the end. And it was not healthy. I, did, I just didn't know. It wasn't until the end that my, um, my physician said, you know, you don't have to eat for two. And I could have fallen off, you know, my chair. I said, what? So I'm going to give you a heads up. You never knew. It's an old wise trail tale and you don't have to do it. Okay. So please eat healthy, eat wise, take care of yourself and you're going to be good. Um, we have a couple tips before we kick off really into what we're talking about today. Um, nausea we talked about before tips you can always use those crackers they, they really help take the edge off of nausea um peppermint you know oils we talked about takes the edge off oh and back up for the crackers um i know a lot of people do battle gluten and wheat allergies and really we're finding out through research wheat's really not good for any one of us it causes inflammation but the point i'm trying to make is there are gluten-free um almond based or rice based crackers that can do the trick just as well as flour based or wheat um, based crackers um, so, you know, there are prenatal, um, recipes or, um, yeah, that was on our website. If you go back to the blogs on our website at www.conoslove.com, um, there are healthy recipes that we posted. So the prenatal slash, um, pregnancy diets, I say for our expecting mamas and for everyone. So go back, way back. I think I started dating them in 2018, 
18. Yes. So there's quite a few, and they're quite yummy. There's quite a few yummers that I would recommend trying. There's a nice smoothie recipe. I remember that. And there's some salads. So there's some really nice um, ideas. Try and mix it up. But, you know, when you're eating a healthy diet, not only eating this healthy diet helps you helps your baby also get all the vitamins that you nutrients that you're going to need and it's going to make a healthy delivery the delivery and I wish I knew then <clears throat> what I know now pardon me but you know one thing I could say this is that just do the best you can you know because there's a lot of things you can do a lot of different foods some things you might not like you know just do the best you can I mean by all means, eliminate junk food. I mean, that's a no-brainer. Because you're not going to get any nutrients. You're not getting vitamins for you or for baby. So do try to wipe that out. It's just, you know, processed food is just so not good. But you're just going to do the best you can, you know. So today we're going to talk about foods that are going to be organic. I'm going to talk all organic. When I talk food, I'm always talking organically. We do it in our house. We stress the, the significance is vital because when you aren't doing, you know, organic, you're taking a chance of having chemicals sprayed on the food and it usually gets into, you know, the food and you just don't need that in your body and neither is this baby. But sometimes you can't get organic and there's a myth out there that organic costs more. Well, that's not true because you know what? You can buy wise, you know, you can be a smart consumer and buy organic and find yourself just about the same budget. It's just, you know, budgeting, cutting out the junk food, and eating wise. So, when I'm talking food, i just let you know for the next few podcasts, I'm talking organic. Alright, so again, do the best you can. So today we're going to talk about foods that are enzyme-rich foods. Um, we're going to talk about green veggies. We're going to talk about seafoods, wild seafoods. We're not going to talk about farm I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Um, we're going to also talk about red raspberry leaf tea. Okay, so first off, when we're talking about enzymes, sometimes you might need, I mean, I know that some people in our house, we need an enzyme supplement to help with digestion. But there are foods that will help you with that. Oh, and by the way, before I forget anything, before I dive into this, please, I think I talked to you guys about it before, get at least two liters of water every day. Okay, that was one that I really wanted to make sure I was clear before I dove in. So, okay, rewind back to the enzymes. Okay, so enzyme-rich foods. They're delicious and they're so good for you. Um, it's foods like papaya, yogurt, avocados, sauerkraut, kombucha, ripe pineapple, um, kombucha. These all assist with your digestion because these are fermented. And they allow your body to receive good, good or beneficial bacteria. So this is important because during pregnancy, digestion slows down in order for nutrients and vitamins from the food to be taken for your baby. And this is also important for everybody because we all need, I, in this day and age, it seems like everybody is sending me to battle some kind. I'm not saying you are, but it just seems to be very popular. People are battling digestion stuff with the gut. So... Mamas, this is vital for you, but everybody listening, it's really important for all of us. It's healthy. So, let's back up for our mamas. So, as a result, um, what I just mentioned, many expecting mamas experience heartburn, gas, constipation. I think we talked about that before. Uh, so, if you eat a quarter to half a cup of enzyme-rich foods, like I just mentioned, um, per meal... This will assist your digestion, help your body break down the nutrients, and allow um, your gut to receive and retain helpful, good bacteria. And again, that's good because you need a lining in your gut. And with that, it helps so much. It, actually, we found through research that when you have a nice lining in your gut, I hate to say gut, but that's what it's called. Um, they're saying now that the gut is the brain to the body. I mean, how about that? We always thought the thyroid was. We thought the brain was. Well, guess what? The gut is, and it affects your, your brain. It's connected. But also, um, believe it or not, it affects inflammation. So we really are stressing, you know, having your gut taken care of. Sometimes probiotic. Talk to your um, dietitian, medical practitioner. But there's, um, there's probiotics out there that are specifically designed for the gut. 
Okay, so let's talk green vegetables. Um, they are so important for many expecting mamas, and again, as well for all of us, we need to eat leafy green veggies. I have my hand up in the air. I've been pretty naughty about them lately, and I'm trying to do an active effort. I know we tend to get tired of the same old, same old. That's why it's, it's really important to be creative and mix it up. Um, it's very important we also eat beets, which are amazing and awesome for the brain. Same with strawberries. They're so important. These foods have a high level of folate, which is a natural form of folic acid. Folate is important to help alleviate birth defects, such as neural tube defects. Again, for everybody, we have got to eat green vegetables that contain vitamins A, C, E, and K. Some greens also offer vitamin B, so it's just a matter of a mind shift to make it happen. Yeah, I know the pizza. Oh, I love the ice cream. Hmm. Yeah, junk food rocks. I know. But it is absolutely vital. We all get our minds around how vital it is to eat right. So these vitamins A, C, E, K, and B, um, these vitamins and minerals are especially and very important, vital to our expectant mothers and their unborn babies. With greens, we want to use wisdom when we're eating them especially for our, our expecting mamas, because some can be very challenging to digest. So you need to be sure that you're going to give yourself 20 bites when chewing, and that's really for everybody, for digestion. Um, if you didn't know, green peppers and quite a few others are very hard to digest along with kale. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. So again, really, if you're eating those veggies, make sure you are giving at least 20 chews or bites. Okay, so how we're, you know, you have the option. There are options now. Things that we didn't think about back when I was expecting our son. I mean, that's, oh my word, 19 years ago. Ha, huh? yeah, I'm handling well, thanks. Um, smoothies. Smoothies are such a, it's so hot right now. We didn't have smoothies back then. You know, the only thing we had was like a ice cream shake or something like that, you know. But smoothies are awesome ways that we can get our green vegetables whipped in there. And it's not as much a challenge for digestion because they're broken down and we can absorb and digest a lot better. So these smoothies are also known by some people as veggie cocktails. That's kind of cool. So these are a perfect option and alternative for pregnancy because you have that nausea that kicks in, you know, and, or you can't eat as much because your baby's taking up so much room. Well, juicing, smoothies, veggie cocktails are awesome. Because there are two ways that you can get your greens, which are key. And it's not as hard for you to digest. And also, it doesn't make you as nauseous. So, we want to make sure you get your greens. And again, these, you know, ways that we can grind them down, you know, into that ground, un, you know, raw, broken down state is vital. Okay, so you have vegetables. And our, let's talk romaine and butter lettuce okay these are pretty challenging to digest and people are finding out now there's not as so much nutrition as we once thought but they're still our greens you know we still, we'll take them versus a pizza slice cucumbers and peppers again the, like i mentioned peppers a second ago are challenging to digest cucumbers and peppers have a lot more nutrients but they can take a toll on the belly burpless cucumbers are wonderful if you ever tried them you'll know what I mean but mamas we know what you're going through it might be harder for you to digest those cukes well if you want to eat hard and you know, harder to digest greens again like kale peppers broccoli collard turnips or beet greens the best thing to do is cook them first and enjoy in a puree or smoothie. Spinach is awesome. It's very high in iron and it's also very high in oxalate. Oxalate um, could actually irritate the digestive tract and stress the kidneys. I know, who knew, right? So it, it's, it is absolutely vital and is recommended to cook spinach and enjoy in moderation. So one thing that we always loved was cooked spinach when we were kids. Well, no, that's debatable. But anyway, we were always taught that it's so important. It is, but we also need to look at the full picture and watch out for our kidneys. So 
All right, we're going to talk about wild seafood. So we're talking about seafood that is not in a farm, okay? So we're talking wild seafood and omega-3s. Wild-caught uh, fish and seafood are packed of protein and loaded with trace minerals like iodine, selenium, and zinc, which are hard um, to find nutrients. And they are absolutely vital to have during pregnancy. So FYI, when you are eating farm-raised seafood, use caution. Research is showing us that chemicals, as well as other toxins, are found in farm-raised seafood. So please, use wisdom. We always need, and all of us need to use wisdom when it comes to mercury and other contaminants that collect in fish. The American Pregnancy Association, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietics, and are all, and as well as FDA, are all recommending moderate fish consumption for expecting mothers. It's uh, suggested to limit yourself to 12 ounces or approximately two to three servings per week. Okay. They're suggesting that you stay with what we call smaller seafood. So what that means is wild salmon, high in omega-3 fatty acids and antioxidants. Anchovies, they're very cost-effective and efficient, and they're loaded with healthy omega-3s. Herring, one of the highest concentrations of DHA and EPA of any seafood. And I'm going to talk to you guys about DHA and EPA in a moment. Sardines. They are top-ranked source of calcium, they're inexpensive, and they're loaded with omega-3s and selenium. Trout is a top source of vitamin B12. Good to know. Atlantic and Pacific mackerel. They're high in vitamin B6, selenium, and vitamin B12. Oysters. Cooked. Absolutely vital. Cooked. And I'll talk to you in a minute about cooked versus raw. So cooked oysters are at the highest level of zinc of any seafood. They are also um, packed with tons of omega-3s. And shrimp, which are very good, and they're high in iodine. Other fish that you can enjoy, um, we would say no more than 6 ounces per week are bluefish, and I'm going to give you a word of caution in a moment about them. Bluefish groper, albacore, in other words, white tuna, and sea bass. Okay. So, to be honest, seafood is one of the most nutritionally dense foods that we can enjoy in all of us. All of us. Seafood is very high in protein, iron, which are all important in pregnancy where um, anemia and the swelling are common. Seafood is high in iodine, selenium, like I guess mentioned a moment ago, and zinc, known as trace minerals. So these nutrients support your endocrine system and are vital for your baby's growth and development. As I mentioned before, seafood is very high in, and vital for omega-3 fatty acids. These long-chain polyunsaturated acids are critical nutrients for a baby's health and development, and they're not created by the human body, so you cannot get them any other place only way we can get them is through eating food. Also, cod liver oil. Okay, there's been a back and forth about that. I'm going to talk to you in a minute about cod liver oil. But anyway, it's recommended during pregnancy for the omega-3s. So the two most beneficial omega-3s are EPA, and I'm going to try to say the word, which is a mouthful, <laughs> eco-sapentaneoc, I might have to spell that one. It's such <laughs> mouthful. E-I-C-O-S-A-P-E-N-T-A-E-N-O-I-C acid. <laughs> mouthful, I guess. And D-H-A. And I'm going to do better on this one, I hope. Docosahexaenoic acid. Okay, I'll spell that for you. D-O-C-O-S-A-H-E-X-A-E-N-O-I-C. Again, acid. Okay, EPA supports the heart immune system inflammatory response, and DHA supports your eyes, central nervous system, and the brain, especially for baby. All right, so this is why it's important for moms to intake EPA and DHA during lactation and pregnancy. 
So research has shown that EPA and DHA have positively affected growth and development on neurological and um, growth development of pardon me, a growth development for the neurological system and development of the baby. So it absolutely is vital, and it's to reduce the baby's risk of developing allergies. So absolutely critical. Now, omega-3 fatty acids reduce the risk of preterm labor, preeclampsia, and may increase baby's birth weight. So again, the um, like I mentioned a moment ago, EPA and DHA also affects visual development of the baby. Omega-3 deficiency, unfortunately, is linked to postpartum depression. And overall, you must say that the pros outweigh the cons of why to enjoy seafood during pregnancy. But you simply need to select the right seafood and the correct amount. So the tip, when you're eating seafood, always remove the skin. That's a really good uh, pointer and tip for everybody. Remove the skin and always thoroughly cook the fish or shellfish which will reduce the environmental pollutants and risk for parasites. Okay, so during pregnancy, there's some seafood you want to avoid. Now, we're going to say, at all costs, please try to avoid farm-raised seafood. As I mentioned earlier, mercury is an element that can, unfortunately to say, be collected in the bodies of water, like oceans and lakes especially, where it turns into something called methyl mercury which is a neurotoxin that can cause problems in the nervous digestive immune and neurological systems now that's for adults huh you want to talk about the effects on a newborn baby in utero methyl mercury is extremely dangerous okay so babies suffer from brain function impairment and compromised neurological development cognitive thinking memory, and other physical mental delays when intaked, when they receive menthol mercury. When children, as we know now, children, when they receive it, they obviously battle the same complications. And that's why we personally here at Conduits are against vaccines. We are against them. We do not agree with them. And we see the damage that they do. But let's go back to talking about eating seafood. Overall, large predators, I should say larger sized predatory fish, contain high levels of this methylmercury. So during pregnancy, avoid and use caution with marlin, short, swordfish, shark, orange roughy, tuna, which is ahi, A-H-I, um, tilefish, mackerel. And there's some that are like at a mid to high level of the methylmercury, um, bluefish, groper, sea bass, tuna, which is canned albacore or yellowfin. They recommend, you know, it's so important to get, but they say, use wisdom, use it, and like, for example, limit to six ounces or less per week. Or again, like I said, avoid it. But if you use wisdom, use caution, and talk to your medical practitioner or dietitian. The mid to high low fish, like I just mentioned, the bluefish groper, seafood, I mean, excuse me, sea bass, tuna, which is a canned albacore or yellowfin, um, you can still ban, you know, benefit from you know, eating them. But again, enjoy the other sources of safe seafood while you're pregnant, which we just mentioned on the list in a moment ago. All right, sushi. All right, we know everybody, well, I can't say we love it in this house, but we know so many love it. I should say, I shouldn't say generalized statement, but many of you love seafood um, that's raw. Um, we know that there's a process that um, sushi goes through. We know, we understand all that, but it is recommended to stay away from it. It is recommended by the professionals to leave it out. And again, if you want to double check with your medical practitioner, by all means do so. The research we've done, they say leave it out. Since it is raw, even though it's going through a process, they still say, leave it out. Raw uh, selfish, such as raw oysters and clams, can carry hepatitis A virus. Only eat cooked shellfish. Okay. Again, omega-3 fatty acids help fight inflammation and support brain, eye, nervous system development. One study suggests that expected mothers who consumed omega-3s during the last trimester of pregnancy boosted their child's sensory, cognitive, and motor development. How about that? 
Omega-3s omega were found in this study to influence a mother's ability to avoid preeclampsia. Hallelujah, right? We don't want that. So that's good news right there. So women with the lowest levels of omega-3 fatty acids were 7.6 times more likely to have had uh, their pregnancies complicated by preeclampsia. So it's right there, evidence, proof in the pudding, why to get omega-3s, huh? Oh, and FYI, that old cod liver oil, terrible tasting, horrible smelling. Um, it's loaded. Cod liver oil is loaded and packed with omega-3 fatty acid and DHA. It's also um, loaded with vitamins A, D, and K. All are vital for the baby's brain, eye, bone development. Here is something to note. Vitamin A deficiency has been shown to cause birth defects. Yet, there was a study back in the 1990s that suggested that high levels of vitamin A, so that means more than 10,000 IUs per day, increase the risk of birth defects. Okay, well, there was a little problem with the information. The problem was that these women in the study took synthetic vitamin A. So, in other words, they took it in supplemental form, not from food. So, in other words, they didn't get it from the sources we just discussed. So my question is, I think there should be a, a re-research. I think there should be somebody else following up on it, but okay. So my question is, if this synthetic vitamin A, okay, that they said caused problems with the birth defects, my question is, are there other synthetic ingredients, in other words, other ingredients added to those vitamin A supplements? Because we know for a fact in vitamins that are not, um, how should I say this nicely? Okay, you need to read your labels. That's all I want to say. Okay, because they do add other things, other things besides what you're buying. So you do need to read your labels. Okay, so again, okay. vitamin A is awesome. It's an, it is beautiful when you get it from food. It comes right there gives you what you need, and helps combat those nasty thoughts of birth defects. And again, it's all about the balance. It has the pros, and it offers a beautiful balance ratio. Please, if anything I said doesn't make sense, give me a holler, okay? And as well, ask your medical practitioner or possibly your dietitian. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about in this podcast is red raspberry leaf tea. You can buy it in the supermarket. Um, it's usually like in the organic session or section, or it could possibly be in the tea section, but really I've been seeing it more in where you might find more organic type foods. So it this red raspberry tea, leaf tea has a wonderful uterine tonic, and it's great for toning the muscles along the pelvic wall. So this tea contains high amounts of vitamin C, E, A, B and significant amounts of minerals such as calcium, magnesium, potassium, and phosphorus, which work together to strengthen and tone the uterus in preparation for labor. So that's awesome. So research um, found that red raspberry leaf tea helps make uh, labor faster and easier as well as lessens the potential of the mother experiencing complications or need for interventions during labor. Oh, yes, this red raspberry leaf tea has numerous benefits for pregnancy, labor, and beyond that you should consider adding it to your regular tea rotation. It is recommended to drink two cups a day, starting about 13 weeks of pregnancy, and it should really help your uh, labor. And by the way, this uh, red leaf tea, or actually red raspberry leaf tea, it makes a dynamite iced tea. So... And also doesn't have caffeine. Again, speak with your midwife, your medical practitioner, or dietitian. If you have any questions, in order to make sure it's right for you. Okay, so we're going to keep this podcast short. And we're going to um, just hope that it blessed and encouraged you. So if you have any questions or concerns about anything I shared today, please give us a holler at www.conwoodsofelove.com. Hit our Contact Us button. Or you can directly contact me at Allison. That's A-L-L-Y-S-O-N at conwoodsolope.com.
And always, we are always here for you, and we encourage you to reach out to us if something doesn't sound right or you need more information. As well as we always, please speak with your medical practitioner, dietitian, midwife, or whoever you have contact with if something doesn't flow right. But again, we're always here for you. Not, okay, next podcast. We're going to continue talking about nutrition for expecting mothers and also information that I think all of us can glean from. And I'm going to tell you specifically what we're going to talk about. We are going to continue talking about um, foods that would be natural digested drinks, root vegetables, dates, organic free range eggs, legumes, berries. And these are all very, very, very healthy. And we need to enjoy during pregnancy as well as I think all of us should. So. Um, let me pray for you and, and just we'll sign off. Father, thank you for this time together. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Everyone that sound my voice, we just pray blessings, blessings and blessings. Lord, I ask you right now to release your um, presence and peace to all of our listeners. We know in this season that we're walking and standing in. There's so much stuff we're all going through. And prayerfully, if anybody hears this after the season that we're in right now, they might receive more peace in the natural. But Lord, we just pray right now, strength, shalom, rest. And Lord, I hope that the, what we shared today, that it can reach someone and that it can bless someone and help someone that has been battling maybe um, dietary complications or just needs help getting back on a nutrition regimen. So Lord, we just speak peace and joy and the fullness of you, God, for each one of these lives. And just let everyone know how loved they are. God, I just want everyone listening to the sound of my voice to know how important they are. They are. They're vital. They're treasure beyond measure. And that you love them so much. So, Lord, we thank you. And all glory goes to you. In Jesus' name. Okay, so again, we mention every time in our podcast, if you're an adoptive parent or a birth parent, and if you find yourself in need of extra support, encouragement, guidance, we're here for you. We have coaches and we have health coaches available to help you. So please contact us at our website at www.conduitsofelove.com. Hit the connect or contact us button. We'll connect with you, see what you need, see what can help you. Or, you, hey, listen, you can give me a holler directly. And in my, again, my website, actually my email, our website is Allison at Again, w do, or conduitsofelove.com. And please, please, I beg of you, whatever you do, remember we are here for you. And any questions you have, please don't think a question is stupid because they're not. You're very important. You're vital. And these podcasts are for you. Okay? And because you know what? You are important. You are needed. You're wanted. You're loved. And also, you know what? You have a vital role. You are an, an integral, critical role in a child's life. Maybe not this moment, but it will come to pass. If you're a birth mom or adoptive family, there's children coming to you. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this is all about the children. And you are vital. So we're going to send from everybody at Condos of Love to you. Big blessings. Hope you join us next time. I hope this was a blessing to you. Thank you for joining me today. And as always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. Hit the bell to get notifications. Please click the like button if you enjoyed this podcast. Please share with others because what you share with others helps others know that we're here. So thank you again. Until next time, we send you all big blessings. This is Allison signing out.